the keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, the game preview show. 49ers versus Carolina Panthers. 49ers, of course, are going to be traveling to the Eastern Seaboard, and they're going to be playing Carolina, and then staying in West Virginia, and then playing Atlanta next week. So it's an interesting time in the year. The 49ers are 11-3 and three, uh, since doing this type of thing. They stay on the East Coast. I think that's a good sign for the 49ers overall, and Kyle Shanahan and this team. There's a lot of cool matchups that are going to be in this game. The Carolina defense is no joke. They're pretty good. Uh, they give up 5.8 yards per pass play. That is pretty darn good. And uh, they got great players like J.C. Horn and, and defensive edge rushers like Brian Burns. So this is not a layup by any means. Carolina can definitely bring it on the defensive side of the ball. And the 49ers offense has had struggles at times. Now they look like they woke up a little bit, a bit against the Rams. Debo Samuel made a huge play in that game. Jimmy Garoppolo made some, some key throws. Uh, and Jeff Wilson Jr. had a big explosive run. Those are recipes for success. Don't turn over the football and get enough points so that this defense can be absolutely stifling. Now, Carolina is not without talent on the offensive side of the ball, but you wouldn't know by their offensive production. Of course, they're led by Baker Mayfield. And uh, Mayfield, a first overall pick, has a tremendous amount of talent. It has not translated so far to the NFL. He has moments uh, but hasn't been able to be consistent, and it sure hasn't been consistent playing for the Carolina Panthers. This is his first year since being traded for. Um, they also have Christian McCaffrey, and everyone knows Christian McCaffrey in the Bay Area, how well he did at Stanford. Uh, he's an explosive player. You're going to have to limit him in this game. Uh, he's a guy that has a lot of versatility. He can play in the backfield. He can line up out wide. He can beat you in matchups you don't really want to have, which is linebackers on Christian McCaffrey, but that could be a key matchup in this game is Fred Warner and Trey Greenlaw against Christian McCaffrey because uh, limiting him is going to be very important and limiting the run game with potential injuries in the interior defensive line for the 49ers is going to be very important. Also, they have wide receivers all over the place with DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, right? The young guy, Shai Smith from South Carolina, who if you've watched uh, the draft coverage was one of my guys. I really liked him a lot. So they have a lot of talent, not to mention... LaVisca Chenault, and I love LaVisca Chenault. Now, Chenault's been dealing with a little bit of injuries, and I don't think Matt Rule in this Carolina offense has figured out how to use his skill set yet, a problem that they ran into in Jacksonville. So I think that this offense has tremendous amount of weapons, and if they get it going, they're very dangerous. The problem is, are you going to be able to get it going against a 49ers defense led by Nick Bosa, a defense that had seven sacks, two turnovers? I mean, they're just, they're a problem. This is the best defense in the NFL, and they've went out consistently and proved it over the first four weeks. Now, you're only as good as your latest game, so they're going to have to prove it again against Carolina, but I think they're up for the task. So in this episode, we're going to go through some key matchups in this game. We're going to go through the wow, that's bold uh, prediction, where I give a bold prediction on what's going to happen. And of course, we'll get into the score prediction, who I think is going to win and what that score is going to be. And I think this is going to be a cool matchup with a lot of Interesting battles because the 49ers are missing players, which makes it even more uh, spicy. But this is the 49ers versus Carolina Panthers game preview show. Got to display the graphic. Uh, it's a, So this one's a lot of fun. Let's, let's get into one of the key matchups in this game. And that's on offense, Jalen Moore versus Brian Burns. And it's about don't getting burned. And for Kyle Shanahan, this is the biggest part. Jalen Moore's a third-string offensive tackle. He's not somebody you want to put in. You want a Colton McKivitz in there. McKivitz gets hurt. So Jalen Moore's ability uh, to slow down guys like Brian Burns is going to be important. Um, they do play a more traditional three-four style of defense. I know it says I know they says they play a four-three, but they often put their outside linebackers up on the line of scrimmage. It looks like a three-four a lot. Now, of course, a lot of defenses are doing that right now. When you have talented players like Brian Burns, you want him standing up, coming off the edge, but they will drop those guys off. They'll run zone uh, coverages where they drop those edge guys off into zone. So uh, recognizing things pre-snap could be a little bit more difficult for Jimmy Garoppolo. So what Kyle Shannon has to do is make it easier on Jalen Moore 
by helping slow down Burns to give Jimmy more time to read what he's seeing. One of the ways you can do that is very similar to what they did last week. Now, because they were preparing for a backup tackle like Colton McKivitz, even though they have a lot of confidence, you had a plan in place where you could give him help. George Kittle could chip. A wide receiver could chip. Kyle Juszczyk could help. Uh, they could pull a offensive lineman and kick that edge rusher out. So it's not going to be a huge difference as far as um, where guys are coming from. This is very you know close to what Denver did. It's very close to what Seattle did. Uh, what the Rams did, you're going to see similar alignments. That's how teams are going in and stopping this outside zone run game that Kyle Shanahan likes to employ is they're running five men at the line of scrimmage. So I think the 49ers need to give Jalen more help. And I think the way they give, give him help is by running the football successfully first. Once you establish the run game, uh, and I know it's difficult when you have backup guys like Jalen Moore in there, but once you do, you make these defensive players get back on their heels a little bit. They can't fly upfield trying to get after the quarterback. That will make it a little bit easier for Jalen Moore. Plus, if you move the pocket, you're going to be able to put him in situations where he's not in traditional pass sets. Traditional pass sets have been a problem for him, where he's gotten beaten inside, and for Mike McGlinchey. Now, McGlinchey has done really good this year, only giving up five hurries. So you would think you can employ a little bit more help to the other side into Jalen Moore. But I think that's how you're going to have to do it. I think it's not very far off from what you saw last year or last week, establish the run game. When in these screen pass uh, places, your wide receivers out on the edge, those are going to be keys. Now, Carolina's got J.C. Horn, and he does a really good job. Who is he going to be locked up on? Is he going to stay on one side? I think those are going to be questions we're going to find out in this game. I'm sure Kyle is going to give him a bunch of different looks. It's all about confusing him. And, of course, I got to talk about my guy Shaq Thompson from Grant High School in my backyard. I watched him play in high school. Very, very talented football player with a tremendous amount of speed to be able to run sideline to sideline. That's where Carolina has. They have speed all over the place. They have an impressive defensive front. Uh, they're pretty stout. So establishing the run is going to be difficult. Uh, being able to confuse a veteran player like Shaq Thompson is going to be difficult, but they're going to have to do it. They're going to have to get after it. And then, of course, we know about their safeties like Xavier Woods. Everyone remembers him from playing in Dallas. So the defense overall for Carolina Panthers is good. Warriors are going to have to execute a multitude of different things and i think diversity is the key we saw that last week with the jeff wilson run now that was to the left side where colton mckivitz was at the time but you saw a lot of different things from pulling offensive linemen to whamming with charlie warner there was so much uh intricate things that were going on everyone had to execute at a high level and they all did at once you can get that sort of execution it's tough for any defense to win um it's just it, it's it's impressive and i think the 49ers and take advantage of Carolina in some areas. I think they will in this game. So that is my offensive matchup, is just to make sure we get Brian Burns taken care of. Don't let him burn us uh, with Jalen Moore playing left tackle. Give Jimmy Garoppolo time, because I think he might need a little bit more time to get the football out this week. I'm not sure it's going to be as early uh, in, his, in his reads that he's going to be able to recognize who is open and who's not. So this could be one of those things that's interesting, pass rush versus time of Jimmy Garoppolo getting rid of the football. But Kyle Shanahan can help by scheming it up with lots of motions to reveal coverage, uh, moving guys around, and then getting the ball into his playmaker's hands really quickly, getting the ball out of Jimmy's hands and into those playmaker's hands where it's a better opportunity to make plays. And of course, just like always, Jimmy don't have any turnovers. Now, for the other side of the football, it's slow down Christian McCaffrey, and it's Dre and Fred's job to slow down CMC, which isn't an easy task, but... When you look at the Rams and you look at the Seahawks and the way the 49ers won those games, they stopped the run. Uh, Penny wasn't able to get to go get going against Seattle. Uh, nothing doing last week you know, for Cam Akers and Henderson. Nothing was going to happen there. 57 yards rushing is not the answer. And I think the 49ers have to go in there with a concerted effort to take away Christian McCaffrey. Last week it was about Cup. This week it's about McCaffrey. If you don't let him run the football, it makes it more difficult on the Panthers offense because Baker Mayfield playing in play action can be successful. Baker Mayfield dropping back 30 times a game cannot be successful in this league. So the 49ers need to go ahead and take away McCaffrey. And it's a tough ask because McCaffrey can line up in the backfield. He can line up in the slot, which makes your personnel groupings change a little bit. And you don't really want matchups normally where you get a running back one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. The only good news is the 49ers have two of the best linebackers and covers in the entire league. Fred Warner with a 75 grade against him. His best mark so far. Everyone's saying, hey, 
Fred's not playing good. Fred is playing at an all-pro level in covers as a linebacker. You saw what he did against Cooper Cup. Those are things he can do against Christian McCaffrey. Now, it's not a hugely creative offense, which is surprising. You have a versatile player like Christian McCaffrey and versatile players like LaVisca Chenault and DJ Moore, you would think you would get a very versatile offense, but that's not what you get. It's very rudimentary the way they go about it. It's pretty simple. Uh, so understanding where your guys are going to be lined up and then doing your job is important. But Bray and Fred are going to have to account for CMC. Got the speed to get outside. They've got the speed to run him down. But when he comes out of the backfield, you have to locate him at all times. All about eye recognition and eye discipline. Locate your guy and lock onto him. And I think early on in this game, Carolina is going to try to establish the run. If the 49ers stop the run game early, they will turn away from it for a little while and try to go past. When they go spread in that way, take advantage, get sacks, and get key turnovers. That is the way for this defense to win. But it all starts taking away CMC. Spectacular player. He hasn't been able to stay healthy over the last few years. No, he hasn't. Uh, but he's still got that ability to be able to make big plays for this Panthers offense. We already talked about the other playmakers. Start letting CMC get going. You got to account for him more and more with a safety in the box or something like that. All of a sudden, you can get DJ Moore down the field. Uh, and, and that's not what you want. You want to be able to take him away. Tarverus Ward, Emmanuel Mosley, give you that versatility. I, I kind of expect we'll see Hufanga helping take away Christian McCaffrey as well. To me, that's just a good idea. Um, but we'll see how Carolina ends up scheming this thing up. But I'm excited about this matchup because I think if the 49ers do take away McCaffrey, it's going to be a long day for Carolina on offense. I don't think they can throw the ball on the 49ers if they have to. If they get down early and the 49ers are actually able to score on offense uh, consistently, then you're going to have a lot of sacks. Could you see the seven number fall? You could, except for this reason. Uh, Stafford will hold the ball and take a sack. Baker Mayfield will try to throw it and throw an interception. So you might end up getting turnovers where you could have got sacks. I think that is the game plan so far for the 49ers. Now let's talk about my wow, that's bold prediction. Wow, that's really bold. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. My wow, that's bold prediction for this game is that the 49ers defense and this is a two-parter, is going to create three turnovers. And I know what you're saying. That's not really that bold. But here's the bold statement. The 49ers offense is going to turn all three of those turnovers points. That's right. I think the 49ers are going to score points in this football game. I think the defense is going to lead the way with short fields. And the 49ers are going to, offense is going to take advantage of it. I think this is one of those games where uh, Baker's going to get rushed. He's going to get hurried. And the 49ers defense is going to take advantage of it. He's going to present them with opportunities. The ball is going to be on the ground. The ball is going to be intercepted. And then this 49ers offense is going to go take advantage of those short fields. And they're going to, and they're going to uh, get some things done. I think it's not surprising about the defensive part of the wild that's bold, but the offensive part where they capitalize on all three. And I think at least two of those that they capitalize on are touchdowns, which could be news for the San Francisco 49ers game. And now it's time for my game prediction. How I think this game is going to go. Uh, last week, I picked the 49ers to beat the Rams 20-16. to And the Rams didn't even get that touchdown that I was expecting them to get. And the 49ers ended up getting a defensive touchdown that got them four more points. So I wasn't too far off. But this 49ers defense is absolutely stifling. They are so good. And they're just making plays. And they're building more confidence. Um, we've got some of the highest rated safeties in the league. The linebacker group is ridiculous. Yama Lenore is coming on the scene. And Mooney Ward and Emmanuel Mosley are locking down the outsides. Throw in the fact you have one of the best defensive pass rushes in the entire league that produced sacks. And I don't know how this Carolina offense is going to be able to do enough against the 49ers. They struggled last week with Arizona. Arizona doesn't have one of the best pass rushes in the league. The 49ers do. Uh, it's going to be tough sledding for Carolina, and that's why I believe the San Francisco 49ers are going to win this game. I think they're going to win it pretty comfortably, 27-6, to equaling their top score total that they got. I've seen people that are going to the third. I'm not right, ready to commit to 30 points, uh, but I think they can get 27. I think, tw you know, uh, 17 potentially uh, points come off of turnovers. Maybe even 21 points come off of turnovers. I think that is possible. Four yards create turnovers. They create you know opportunities on defense. The offense goes and cashes in. That's the recipe for success for the year. But they got to go play it on the field. Never one of those things where it's a guarantee. Anytime you play a team in the NFL, 
matchups can go one way or the other. But I'm going to bet on this 49ers defense. They are absolutely fantastic in the way that they go about their business. But I think the 49ers offense gets it done enough. Defense sets the table for them. It's going to be a great game. Let me know what you thought of this 49ers game preview show. And leave your predictions for the game in the comments section. I would love that. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate all the support that I get. All the great comments. So, such a great uh, fan base here with the 49ers. I'm excited always to bring you these episodes. But I am curious about your thoughts. I'll try to get back to you. It has been a busy schedule because of the short week. But that's, that's exciting. It means we don't have to wait as long for football. 49ers football is on the way. Of course, more episodes will be coming around. You can go over on Patreon and check out the scouting report video that's going to be dropping later where I'm going to break down the Panthers versus Cardinals game. And doing this every single week, and that's available over on Patreon. You can check that out. There's also shows like Slightly Offsides and 49ers Face Off. A new episode of Big Yikes as well will be available this week for Patreon. Uh, also, don't forget to watch Cover 2 with me and Warren. Uh, Jay and the Bay's What's Good show on Friday. That's going to be a good one. And then Saturday, join me for What's the Game Plan. Going to really get into the X's and O's, take an even deeper dive than we did in the previous show, talking about how the 49ers need to attack each and uh, each one of these players and what their game plan will be for the game. It'll be a fun week. Hope everyone enjoys it. Uh, stay safe and remember the right way is always the 49ers way.